Good afternoon. Welcome to Artist Spotlight right here on Life 97.5 FM, where we chat with a gospel artist wherever they may be around the world, using their voices to proclaim Jesus the Christ. I'm Krista J. Paul, and it is such an honor, a pleasure to connect with none other than Ben Estelle, hailing all the way from Toronto, Canada. Hello, Ben Estelle. Hi, Krista J. How are you doing today? Oh, I am so good. I'm so good. Good to meet with you and to chat with you. How are you doing? Thank you so much. It's good to meet with you as well. What an honor. Thank you very much for having me. And yeah, I'm doing great. I am pretty much dealing with our beautiful Canadian weather that I, I keep telling people the Canadian weather is bipolar. So on Monday, it rains, on Tuesday, it snows, and on Wednesday, it's sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> but everything the Lord creates is in order and is beautiful. Amen. So today it's a little gray, but other than that, basking in the glory. Amen and amen. That's so, so good. So good. That's Thank such you. amazing. That's how, that's how amazing God is. You know, we can both yes. be experiencing the same sun, but yes. where you are, it's, it's, it's raining with the sun and where I am, it's, it's dry, <laughs> you know? So yes, that's God, yes. that's God. That's God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, good to have you, to hear your, your story as you share Thank with us, you. Ben Estelle. Um, You know, we're going to be hearing a bit about your single as well, your latest single, Trust in You. But I'd love yes. for Barbados to hear about you, the woman of oh. God, and, and, you know, who you are and where God has taken you from to make you be the, the woman that you are today. So if you could tell us a bit about your background, we'd, we'd love to hear it. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm Ben Estelle. I tell people I'm Ben Estelle, your favorite gospel artist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I, I have a earthly background from Africa, from West Africa, actually. Um, and I grew up there for part of my life and then I moved to Canada. And when I came here, um, all my life, really, I've been in the church. I've been, you know, in the choir, in the music ministry, the children's church. And then my mom, when I was a child, had me also participate in what they call Children for Africa. So the African Development Bank had a choir for the, the kids, for their employees. That was, we were pretty much singing to give a voice to African children and bring hope. So I had the grace to be part of that choir. So I was always in the musical environment uh, for the most part. And then when I came here, I just honestly just took a dive into the church choir. I was involved in the music ministry. I served in so many roles. I wow. served as the choir secretary. I served as the choir leader. My latest role was regional music leader. So we had a big choir. Um, of multiple groups that would come together whenever we have big programs and stuff. So those were kind of the exposures I had. Um, but then about two years ago, you know, I've always known that I was going to do music, that I was going to go to the world because I wanted to bless the world with my gift. Amen. But you know, sometimes we delay and sometimes we look at limitations. Um, but then the Lord said, you have to look beyond because if you keep looking at what's in your face and you is holding your back, then I can't be God for you mm -hmm. because you're not giving me room to be God. And so I had Amen. to let go and let God. And so I did that. And I said, I'm going to take the first step. And I took the first step, then the second step, then the third. And here we are today. Wow. That is yeah. amazing. That's, that's great. And you, you. you would have had that background. Well, well just how, how important would you say it is for for parents to be involved in their children's lives in that way to hone those gifts and let them be involved the way you were how, how important would you say that is I think it's highly important because to be honest with you and in all fairness I don't even think my mom knew that I would be where I am today with music mm -hmm. as far as she was concerned you know African parents you're going to church whether you like it or not yeah. I'm going to lock the door you're following me to church. If you do not go to church and I come back and meet you here, my friend, it's not going to go well. And you're not moving out and you're not eating in this house. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the Caribbean too. There, we, there we go. The, the, I mean, it's tough, but I feel it helped. Only God knows where I would have been today. But because my mom was that tough, 
every Sunday I knew, oh my God, we gotta wake up, gotta get dressed, we gotta run to church. So in my mind, I felt like instead of being angry every Sunday morning at my mom and jumping church, like other kids used to do, because they would time their parents and be like, okay, the service starts at 10 o'clock, they're gonna be done at 12 30, 10 15, I'm gonna run away and go do whatever I wanna do and come back at 11 45. Um, I didn't do that. I didn't have the nerve to do that because I had a really, really strict parents. So that fear was there. But I also thought to myself, instead of fighting with my mom and getting a beating out of it, just find something to do in this church. And since I liked to sing, the, the only it. logical thing I could come up with was to go to the choir. Yeah. And look at it today. We are still Amen. singing for Jesus. We're still blessing Jesus, uh, uh, lives with the name of Jesus in music, in sound. So I think my mom may not have known the distance she was going to cover in my life with this, but she definitely, definitely had the right foundations for me. And Amen. for that, I'm grateful. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Wow. All right. Well, well tell us then at what point on this journey, did you decide, you know what, let me actually step out even more and do my, my recordings. What happened then? Okay. Um, so like I said, I've always liked music and I have to say, I've always been ambitious <laughs> when it came to my music. So um, I actually started going to the studio to record way back. I had a dream in my heart that I was going to have an album. So, you know, then I was very young and I had, you know, a very uh, entry level kind of job so I would save and then I'll beg my friends come on come and do backup for me please but at, you know no matter how much I saved it was a mountain to climb because yeah. I was starting in the work environment I didn't have a ton of money at the time but I had a dream so right. after a while I think this, that particular studio thought okay you know what this kid is actually I'm going nowhere so they stopped taking my calls <laughs> they never answered my phone calls again so that, that just died down there uh, but then 2017, um, there was an opportunity to go to South Africa for a music festival um, that church had in place. So this, they sent me there. And while I was there, somebody introduced me to a producer by the name of Promark. And they said, you know, you're going to need Promark to do your soundtrack for the festival. Personally, I wanted to go enjoy the festival, be blessed and come home. But it was right. like, oh, you're going to sing, so you're to sing. <laughs> so I'm like okay so we we got the soundtrack done it was me and a whole bunch of us a, a few friends i think we were like maybe 13 or 15 um that went there and so we we get there and it, i am so sorry my toddler that's oh, sorry guys so uh pretty much we we get there and they were like oh no you're gonna need a soundtrack and i said okay let's, let's get this soundtrack situation going so here i am in a country I don't know, they're telling me I need a soundtrack. And so they introduced me to Promark and um, overnight with Promark, we pretty much had a soundtrack. And wow. it was like, okay, now we have to learn the song. Now we have to learn the song, we have a soundtrack, we wrote the song and it just so happened that I was really sick that day, but I still had to sing. I had to deliver on that song. So we all did what we had to do. After we came back to Canada, I just felt like, you know what, this is it. You, you can do this kind of thing and stop. You got to keep going. You got to keep moving. Yes, that's right. So that's pretty much what I did. So all the songs that I had, and I write songs very easily. Like, it comes to my mind, I have the melody, I put it down. Great. So I just started recording them one after the other. And, but I recorded and I kept. You know, it, it wasn't released. It wasn't, I was scared of, oh my God, what if it doesn't sell? What if people don't like it? And what I mean by doesn't sell, I don't mean financially. I meant, what if people don't receive the song? You know, mm -hmm. and then I started doing research and I'm like, okay, this is a lot more than I really thought it was. You have to really put a lot of time and effort and be committed. Yes. And so at that point I realized maybe that's why the Lord called it a gift because it still doesn't go. That's right, that's and right owe it and that's why he's God and he has to be part of the story so I continued I continued I continued and it was in 2020 that it was like okay it's, it's time to jump because I had people on my case telling me oh my god with your vocals you know you should have released an album by now I had a friend that said to me in 2019 Estelle no no it was actually in 17 in in South Africa she says to me you know Estelle with the voice that you have and the music that you have you know you should have had at least an album or two out by now we're looking Ooh. up to you sitting there like we're both in the choir 
we're pretty much the same age and we're both singing the same things. What makes you think I need to put an album out? If you want an album out, my friend, go put your album out. Right. Um, but you know, <laughs> when I got to my room, I said to myself, you know, the Lord talks through people. That's right. So I thought, you know what? If that girl made that statement, it's a very expensive statement. Um, for someone to say to you, we're looking up to you, we're waiting for you. I said, okay, maybe God is actually telling me to get to work. So okay. those were all things that really pushed me and encouraged me to go in the direction that I went. And then I started recording back to back. Now it became part of my life. It wasn't anymore, oh, I got a track. It was now, no, we need to have a track right now and we need to push good, it Good, good, good. And that's how the story pretty much started. Wow, that's that's wonderful. That's so Thank good. You. So, so good. So how has the journey been since for the past couple of years? Amazing. Uh, it's, listen, if I told you it was smooth sail, I would be lying through my teeth. But I have to say, as one of my, my pastor friends would say, as a Christian, you never lose. You yeah. either win or you learn. The classroom is- I'm going to steal that. <laughs> well, thank you. Because <laughs> the, the, the course, the course about your gift with the Lord is an ongoing classroom and it's intense. You know, because at the beginning in my mind, I thought, oh, I have a voice. I have beautiful lyrics and that's all I need. Hey, I'm going to make it. But then when we started, that's when I realized, oh, hold on a minute. There's a whole bunch of people that have voices. There's a whole bunch of people that want to make it too. And that have the music. But we don't all look at things the same way. That's right. So we have to accommodate each other. But also we have to accommodate each other without getting offended at each other i mean yes. the music industry i call it a public place so you're yes. bound to step on each other's toe ruffle some feathers hug each other laugh together have a coffee together and sometimes like you know, i don't want to talk to you today i don't i'm not gonna answer my call um so it's been awesome because i had the opportunity to meet a very wide array of people they have instilled so much wisdom in my heart uh, from the tough times to the easy times to the scary times, because sometimes you have a project and everything points to it's not going to work. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the musicians can get the notes right or, you know, you, you get the photo shoot and you hit the pictures and, you know, there's always something that comes up and you're yes. wondering why well, it's not working. But then I've learned to stand head on and face those situations and say, you will work. That's because right, speak to the mountain. Exactly. And, and another thing that I've learned in this is you don't speak to the mountain from a far place and say, hey, you over there mountain, move out of my way. No, you face it on. You go That's right good. to that mountain. Sometimes That's you good. can smell the breath of that mountain right on your face and you'll say, you're gonna move. I am not moving. Amen, amen, amen. You're gonna amen. go. I am not moving. That's you know, right. And those, those are all situations that built me up. And now when I am working on a project or I'm getting ready for something and I face that kind of mountain, it's like, oh, don't look at it. It's going to go. So before <laughs> you even get to the mountain, the mountain is like, I was just testing you. I'm out of here, man. You're too strong. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's been an awesome journey. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. That's that's so good. Amen and Thank amen. You. Amen. Oh man. So well, this latest single, Trust in You, is so yes. powerful. The lyrics are are, are so powerful. Uh, tell you. us about it. Did you write it? What was the process like for this? So of all my songs, this was the one that I did not write myself. Um, I actually, to be honest with you, I don't have trust in you in mind. I did not, but I did have a situation at the time where I was um, challenged in my faith. I was really, really faced by this. This was beyond a mountain. It, I got knocked out left, right and center. So I, I needed to remind myself of my victories. So I was talking to a friend and I said, this is what's going on. He, he had an idea of what I was facing and I was really, he, he felt like, you know, you always win in situation and you always do so well, but what's so different with this particular situation? And I said, I don't know, but you know, I, can, I, I can't seem to be able to get past it. I'm having a hard time and I want a song. I want to sing it out. I want to get it out. I want to let it out and I, I need a song. So he goes, okay, I'll write your song. So, okay. We talk about it and came back six months later. <laughs> 
with the song. I was thinking next week, week after, man, think it's time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't bug him about it because, hey, people have lives, you know. He's also right, right. And I understood that. So when he gave me the song, uh, he sent it to me as a voice note on a phone. And, you know, that's when God plays genius around you. Yes. And that's why it's important for us not to be in competition with people around us. You need to Amen. appreciate Amen. the blessing in their life because it's going to work that's for right. you. So I took the voice note and I sent it to Promark. And I said, Promark, what can we do with this thing? Promark says, I'm going to cook it. That, that's, his, that's his line, you know? I'm going to cook it. I'm nice. like, I need it to be hot. He said, oh, nice. oh it's going to burn. It's going to burn. It's going to burn their tongue. I said, good, let's cook it. And so he's very spirit filled and his wife is a prominent um, gospel figure in South Africa. So when Promark tells you he's going to cook it, oh, he's going to cook it. He's going to cook it well. So, very well. He said, <laughs> that, oh, the pot is hot. And then he goes, yeah. And when you sing it, oh, it's going to be hot. So I worked on it. I, I went to the studio. I recorded the song. And it was like in the studio, somebody hit me. The song came alive. The Amen. song became real. And oh, I just said to myself, well, who else are you going to trust? That's right. That's There's right. Jesus that it is Jesus or Jesus. I mean, Amen. There's nothing out there in the world for you. That's um, right. Is Jesus on, or Jesus? So Amen. I, Amen. I, like one of my friends said, I married the song. I became one with the song. Yes. And so I knew I was going to shoot a video on that song. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know how or when, but I knew there was going to be a video on that song. And so it was last year that I was six months pregnant. And it's like, okay, let's shoot that video. <laughs> So if you notice know in the video, I was actually pregnant. <laughs> That's yes, why I had the back dress. So yes. we, we went ahead and we shot that video. But that song just became like a hymn in my heart. Amen. Because Amen. many other things happened. I mean, I was pregnant. That in itself is a situation of, of, of faith. And I, I just kept playing the song to myself and singing it. You know, especially the part that says, God is faithful by whom I've been called. We are in fellowship. We are in oneness together. When you're in oneness with God and you're mm. conscious of that oneness, you have got to be very talented to fail. Amen. That's right. To That's to right. For failure to fail if you're one with God because it's not possible. Yes. yes. That's yes. like saying, Oh, um, I have my eyes on my body right now. They are part of my body, but I think I'm going to go blind. Mm -hmm. You have to go the extra mile for an absolutely healthy eye-seeing person to go blind. You need to do something yes. out of the box, unless there's a medical condition. But if you're the one that's initiating the blindness, you better be creative to knock those eyes out because it's yes. impossible. You yes, know? yes, and yes. Just, came to that conclusion i'm one with the spirit of god but there's no failure there's no loss there's no nothing broken nothing stolen it's gonna work i just have Amen. to believe my own song that's and the right song he said i believe in your word i believe what you've spoken i have to stick with what has been said about me and i have to believe it the word of that's god right. does not fail it's it's people need to, to to come to that realization the word of god has been right. around for as long as humanity has existed, it has never failed. Amen. And, and we, 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 we just have to trust in him yes. as he gives us his word. Yes. And, um, you know, it's, I'm telling you, that's just as amazing. You have a very powerful testimony and obviously a lot you. that you can share with people, you know. Um, yes. So I, I, as you continue to minister, we just pray that God will continue to use you, Ben Estelle, Amen. wherever, wherever, Amen. wherever in this earth. The earth is the Lord's, you're his. Cool, let's take care of <laughs> Right? Yes. Yeah. So, so where can people find your songs and um, how can they connect with you? Okay. My songs are everywhere. So you can find them on all digital platforms. We're on Deezer, we're on Amazon Music, we're on um, uh, Apple Music, 
we are everywhere. Spotify, you can create playlists with the song so you can always have them with you in your car, in the house, wherever you go, or on YouTube. So there's quite a number of videos on YouTube and music is not the only thing I do. I do have a motivational show. Yes. So for yes. now, it's very short clips. They are about five, five minutes and a half at the most. Some are three minutes, some are even two minutes. Um, they will bless you. So if you're looking for me on YouTube, you have a big buffet of different things that I have there. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. I'm always there. I will answer you if you message me. Um, I'm on Twitter. The one that I'm on, but I'm on <laughs> with a bit of calmness is TikTok. Because I always say to my husband, that place, man, woo, that place is hot, man. <laughs> But you can find us there as well. So th there's many places we are on and you can locate us. And there's also the website, www.benestel.com. If you would like to go check it out, it's being built because we have some goodies that are going to be nice. coming your way very soon. Nice. So it's here and there. So there are some things you're going to see and you're going to be like, is that what she said on the radio? That's what she said. She just didn't give it the entire That's gist. Right. Because you can't give all, you can't give all one time. <laughs> That's where you can oh, find. That's right. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Ben Estelle, all the way there in Thank Toronto. You very Canada, much. With your African, West African roots. Thank you for sharing <laughs> with us. And um, you know, we wish you all God's best with all your music and everything else you're doing. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Thank you for having me on the show. And I'm gonna say to all the the, the listeners and viewers, if the, the, that you know opportunity, you are so pretty. Girl, beautiful. So, hey, I, I'm very graced to be on the show. It came with beauty. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. God bless you, Venice. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right. Okay. That's All it right. for today's Artist Spotlight, Venestel, and I'm Krista J. Paul. Thank you for listening. <laughs>